there. In this video, I made a little um, city in a bonsai pot that I found outside in the garden. I thought it would make a great vessel. Oh, my face. That was Luna putting some music on for me. Um, yeah, I made this little city in a bonsai pot. Um, and I thought the vessel was really good. I think you could use cups and bowls and all sorts of pots and things and incorporate themes that would go with them to make little tiny dioramas or even bigger ones. And um, yeah, I like the idea. So I hope you find some inspiration with this idea and I hope you enjoy the video. Just starting out with the pot and um, a nice stack of insulation foam. Just as high as you're going to want to make your diorama and then just use the, uh, the vessel that you're going to use and just trace around it and then slightly inside so you know to be smaller to fit inside the actual pot itself and that's the base ready to go. I'm just going to glue each layer up. Make sure you use a water-based glue or it'll destroy your foam. I have to allow this uh, overnight to dry so that will give me plenty of time to get to know the shape of the foam and that will allow me to um, see where I want to go with it and what I'd like to do with the shape. Say what you want to say to me now I want to wake up with you in the morning After spending some quality time getting to know the foam better, I was able to see where I wanted to go with it and where I wanted to start cutting away to make the, uh, the shape of the mountain. I just started cutting away with the knife. This knife is a brand new blade. It was really sharp and I struggled with this, really, really struggled with it. So I ended up having to use a hot wire on it, which I didn't do on camera because I didn't want to end up in the Darwin Wards expiring from huffing too much uh, foam fume so yeah I, if you're going to do this with a knife maybe you want to get a hacksaw I don't know this was this was pretty tough got my little lump of concrete to just start tearing away to make it look like natural rock formation it gives it quite a fine pattern the harder you do this, the, the more it will really rip it away. You can take large amounts off in a short period of time with this kind of thing. And you can also carve nice sort of um, pieces out. It's a great tool. It's so primitive, but it works so well. I'm going to do the rest of this outside, it's messy. Got a nice sharp chisel which is really excellent for taking away nice pieces to make a rock pattern as well. This makes a, sort of a smooth um, pattern when you pull away the pieces and the concrete makes very rough, more fine patterns. And you use both, it comes out very, very natural looking. I, I like to do the concrete after using the chisel. It makes a really good, um, a good looking natural rock. I just made a little sort of um, an entrance to the cave. I don't know if you call it a facade. And a little... Um, platforms and things that I fitted by just pulling them away with my fingers really basic stuff and I cut up some small pieces of the um, the foam so I could place them around and start to see where I wanted to sit things on this so I could get a feel for how how it was going to look just going willy-nilly gluing stuff down you'd probably have a lot of problems 
And I pulled that off because it was bloody ugly. It just was so wrong. And now it's a nice little platform to put buildings on. So, yeah. A brick wall. I don't know why I made a wall. But there you have it. It's, uh, yeah. The wall on the mountain. Once I started poking holes into these little buildings and making them actually look like buildings, you could really see it coming together rapidly. It started to look really good. It was it was a fun part of it. This is a way to cover up all those ugly gaps between each layer of foam too. To make the holes in the buildings for windows and doors, I just used a, a skewer and um, a, a slice stop coffee stirrer. I just poke a hole in things a lot of the time just to break the surface tension so it doesn't tear the foam. I just used a knife to cut the size of the doorway. And then just push it away. This one didn't come out very neatly but the others they came out almost perfect every time with this. Same trick with the windows. And then just little tiny bits of foam to look like balconies or awnings. It's so basic, but it just, it, it changes the dimensions. And when you paint it, it even changes it more. Yeah, this is really basic stuff. But it looks great on a small scale. Tiny little bridge from a very thin strip of foam. And I just ran a pencil over it. And then on one side I pulled a little hard so it would just pull some pieces away to make it look a little damaged. This is so fragile though. I, um, even handling it would be very um, unwise later down the track because it, it will break. Whoops. The buildings that um, weren't already glued on, I have decided to stain them with brown ink because I want some contrast between some of the buildings so they're not all exactly the same. The uh, other ones that I've already glued down, I, I spray them with some black watered down acrylic paint. So, um, yeah, I, it didn't really make much difference in the end, but I was hoping for contrast. These little buildings, I just kind of had to cover the edge of the pot because it, it wasn't sitting right. So I just roughly laid it down. There's a little uh, platform. For anyone who doesn't know this trick, you can put pins into foam to hold things down. I'm pretty sure everyone knows this, but I didn't discover this till very long ago, so I think it's a brilliant little trick. Holds things down perfectly, and it doesn't um, it doesn't destroy, destroy even small pieces of foam that you want to adhere. To make the little um, platform I just used a pencil and drew in the uh, pattern that I wanted on it. I do that with everything. I just draw a pattern even for bricks. It works well enough. Everything I do is super super basic though. With this platform and even with um, some of the buildings, I um, just pulled foam away and made them fit onto the rock formation. It wasn't exactly perfect, but being foam, you can you can push it in and then use the pins, and it it, it makes a really neat fit. A little uh, bridge to nowhere. <laughs> It goes alongside with the brick wall that uh, serves no purpose. <gasps> I don't know why I did this either, but I like the way it looks. So, um, yeah. I never really plan anything I make. I just fly by the seat of my pants. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. With the pins, I also held things down without gluing them because everything kept falling off. So it just let me see the layout. More little uh, detail. Really simple strips of foam I mean they're kind of nonsensical but it works because I wanted variations between every single building 
And this, I was, I was going to make a tower, but that looks wrong. I don't know. So, flick. I just put a house up there instead. And I gave it a spray of the watered down black acrylic paint. And I did that outside because, yeah, that's a messy job. And that, um, that coats it beautifully. Now it's ready to start getting down to business. Just some acrylic grey that I made up. Just sort of a stone grey, I suppose you'd call it. And then I just dry brushed it on. When I put this on, it looks so heavy. But um, the foam is so absorbent because I don't prime my foam. It stays absorbent. So whatever I put onto it, it just goes within the foam and it dissipates and the colour will um will disappear quite quite a lot. That brings out the detail beautifully. I just went over the entire thing with this. It uh, came out looking very white on camera. It looks a lot whiter than it is. It almost looks like a big stack of bones or something. But of course, I'm going to darken it up now. I just um, used a little bit of brown ink, the last of my brown ink, and um, some burnt sienna. And I um, really wet everything down because I want the paint to dissipate and sort of bleed I don't want to just go slapping paint on because it would it would sit and I don't want it to sit I want it to run and and look natural even the ink I um I wet it down before I put it on because I really want it to bleed very very well through this you can see it running and it goes into the finest crevices every little part it will go into and give it a very natural look I love watching that so rapidly alters it it's great I just do this over the entire thing except for on the buildings I didn't uh, I didn't go on the buildings and then I put some green down because you want to look you know once again natural this uh, I made sure I did it while the brown ink was still wet because I want it to blend and look natural. Normally I'd never put something like a green straight out of the tube onto anything, but because I'm blending it with the brown ink, it, it brings it back to a natural looking colour. And like what's on the palette there. You can see that the green has bled upward to look like a very fine moss. When painting the buildings, I tried to steer towards natural colours again with um, a burnt sienna and um, I think it's a burnt umber. But um, yeah, I just, I, I really wanted to have some colour, but um, I've got to try and keep it a little bit natural looking as well, otherwise it would really stick out and probably look a little strange. I didn't paint these too evenly either, I'd want them to look a little rough. If you go painting it like painting a wall it's going to look flat and strange so just um, just do it lightly don't worry about it looking perfect being aged stone it would certainly not look perfect anyway with every building I only painted um, a certain way down so the bottom would still look dirty that would save me having to dirty it up too much later on I use this kind of a yellow whitish yellow I, I just made it up but it's kind of neutral but yet it's got color it, it works quite well especially for this rough kind of painting that I'm doing you could do this intricately and beautifully, you know, but you can also do it roughly the way I did and it just, it works. 
I think it's the foam that lends itself to this kind of thing though. You can be really rough with foam and it just looks natural on its own. I put a little pop of colour into it. I didn't do this on, on too many of the buildings but I just thought it would be a nice contrast. That's a beautiful blue that one. And then with the little balconies and things I just kept the colours um, all sort of you know, in, in uniform together so they'd all fit. And those little impressions that I've made with the end of a toothpick, you just use them to colour them with whatever tool that you made the impression. Just dip it in the paint and then put it into the, the hole that you've made. It's time to start putting all the little buildings on. And the bridge to nowhere. <laughs> It looks good though, it looks good, it's useless but it looks great. Tiny building that one. It'd be a dangerous place to live this. <laughs> Very dangerous. There's the city slums down the bottom. It looks bare without any foliage. little one on the hill instead of the tower it looks a lot better than that bizarre looking cylinder that was going to be up there oops stand up it's a bit wonky that one <laughs> I'm going to dirty all these up later so they won't look like they're uh, free floating on the diorama and the foliage is made from car washing sponge that I I blitzed it up with the well I broke it up with a wire brush and then put green paint through it and then I just put clumps of it on this really fills all the voids and it adds a lovely color to it as well I had to put it all around the edge of the pot because you can see how ill-fitting that was because I'm I'm pretty bad with measuring and cutting and that sort of thing but yeah, if it doesn't work you just disguise it and I just put it anywhere that uh, helped balance the look of the diorama And on, on the uh, final part of it, I just put a little bit of lime green. It saves you putting flocking down because on such a tiny scale, flocking looks too big. It just gives it a sun-kissed look. And that's it. All done. I hope you got something out of this tutorial, even just the uh, inspiration to find a pot or something to to build into. I think um, the only limitations would be imagination with this kind of thing and you could do some pretty amazing stuff. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.